Hey guys, welcome back to Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started programming with Kotlin. Okay, so it's going to be a short video where I'm just going to walk you through, you know, what you have to download, where to go, how to install it, and how to create your first project and write your first little Hello World program, right? So just the very basics. And then uh, I'm going to show you also where you can find your source code file. So if you're a student of mine and you had to turn in your homework, then you would know where to go, what to get, and all of that kind of uh, stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's take a look at a browser and punch up your browser, your favorite browser, whatever it might be, and then um, go to uh, jetbrains.com, punch up their website, and then we're gonna go, and we're gonna go under um, developer tools, click on that, and then from there, you can select the IntelliJ IDEA. Okay, so you can click on that. And then in the upper right hand corner here, you've got this download uh, button. Okay, so you can click on that and that'll bring up some options for you. So you're gonna pick whichever operating system you're using, Windows, Mac OS, Linux. And then from there, you can select amongst three options. You've got Ultimate, which is for web and enterprise development, right? And this option is you have to pay for it but you can get a free 30-day trial if you want you can use the community version which is free and open source and they have a a chart here that details the differences between the two uh, but if you scroll down a little bit further there is a option for people who are learning or teaching programming well since i teach programming and since you know, you're probably, a or you might be a student, you know, if you're a student of mine, you're certainly a student, then this might be the option for you. So if you click this little drop down menu here, it gives you the option again to select which operating system you want. Well, I want the installer for Windows because, well, I'm on a Windows machine. So I'm gonna select that, and then the download is going to begin. And then from there, you can just save the installer uh, to wherever is convenient you know save it on your desktop for example okay so once that download is done um, it's, it takes it's about a 600 megabyte download so depending on the speed of your internet connection you know it might be fast or slow once it's done fight it on your desktop and it's going to look like this right there the up, upper right hand corner that's what your installer is going to look like so you can double click on that and then uh, once you do double click on it you'll get a little pop-up that says you know if you're on if you're on windows it'll say you know are you sure you want to uh, install this software you know that that annoying um, pop-up that comes up say yes and then you'll get presented with the installer all right so you have the installer wizard and it's the same stuff as you're usually used to right so you click on next and then specify where you want to uh, install it the default is probably fine for you so then you can just click next Right. And then here, what I like to do is I like to leave all of this stuff unchecked, but um, you can create a desktop shortcut. You can update your context menu. What that basically does is if you right click on your desktop, a little option will show up there for the IDE here. Um, you can create associations. So for example, anything with a .java extension, when you double click on it, and it'll open up an IntelliJ. Um, and this will add the bin folder to the path for your operating system. Um, which you may or may not like. I don't like it, so I'm just gonna leave everything unchecked. So then once you're done with that, click next. And then I just go with the default here, click install, and then it's gonna, it's gonna do its thing. Okay, and so once you're finished with that, then you're left at the completion screen. And so you can click finish, or you can go ahead and just check that box right there and run it right away. So that's what I'm right. gonna do. Once you click finish, then the JetBrains privacy policy pop-up appears. And so then you can just click that and then click continue. And we now are going to be in business as soon as this finishes. Okay, you're gonna get a pop-up here that asks you if you are a learner or an educator. Well, I'm an educator, so I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna click on Start Using EduTools. 
Okay, so now from here, we can create ourselves a new project. So we're gonna click on that new project button. Okay, and that's gonna give us our new project window. And so we'll go ahead and name this, you know, whatever you want. I'm gonna name it, um, I don't know, Kotlin Demo. And then you can specify, this is gonna create a, a folder named Kotlin Demo somewhere that's gonna have your source file in it as well as other project related files. And you gotta put it somewhere. I like putting it on my desktop, but you can select other places as well by clicking on the browse button over here. And we're gonna be writing a Kotlin program. So make sure that you select Kotlin for the language. And then you can leave the rest of these things as their defaults. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click create. And then we should get our new project created. And so there we are. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna need to add a source code file to our project. So we'll go over here on the left-hand edge here and we'll click on the project icon. And then we'll see that there's a project browser area which you can resize to your preference by grabbing the edge and dragging it. We're gonna open up this source folder here by clicking on the little carrot, and then we're gonna open up the main, and then you can see that there's a Kotlin folder there. So you're gonna to wanna to right click on that and then select new, and then Kotlin class slash file. And so in this pop-up here, we're gonna name our source code file. So I'll name it main.kt, and I want just a file. I don't want a class, because we're just making a little hello world program. Hit enter when you're ready, and now we have our editor where we can start typing our code. Now it's gonna be a simple hello world program. So all we're gonna need is our main function. We'll create that by using the keyword fun and then main, and then we'll have an opening and closing curly braces. So anybody who's programmed in Java or C++ is gonna look very familiar, very similar to what you're used to. Okay, now this next part, we're just gonna invoke the print function and this is gonna look familiar to you Python people. And we're just going to say in here, hello world. Okay. And that is it. So let's go ahead and build this and run it. So in the right hand corner up here, you can see that there's the hammer. And that is just for if you want to build your project without actually running it. And then you've got that traditional, you know, green looking arrow that you can click on to build and run. So that's what we're going to do. So let's click on that. Okay, and it'll take a second. And then you can see that your output window appears at the bottom and you can see hello world. So we have success. Okay, so last but not least, I'm gonna show you where you can find the uh, source code file. So remember at the beginning, I placed uh, the folder on my desktop. So you can see up here, um, this is the path. So Kotlin demo was the folder. That's the project folder. It's on my desktop on this PC. And so I've already opened it up and you can see that there's some stuff that's already made in here. It corresponds to what you saw in that project browser window uh, within IntelliJ. So if you click on source here, okay, and then you go to main and then Kotlin, right? There's your source code file right there. So you can um, actually double check and make sure that it's the right file by opening up with say um you know notepad or something like that so if you right click on that guy and then open it up with notepad okay so there you can see inside of notepad the exact same source code that we had inside of um intellij right there so you know for a fact that that's the correct file all right, so that's everything that I got for you in this video. If you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked. If you've got that thumbs down button as well, please consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got uh, paid memberships for as little as 99 cents a month with additional perks. Join as a subscriber, leave a comment, ring the bell so you know when new videos are available. But most of all, thanks for watching. And if you're a student of mine, you have any questions, then hit me up in email, stop by my office hours, or log into Zoom and let me know. Okay? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.